Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing The Lord of the Rings Return to Moria and we're going to be doing the next step in our evolution. So you can see down in the hot bar, we've got our steel pickaxe and our steel hammer. We've already made a video on how to do that. Actually, I made the first video on how to fix the Great Forge of Narvi and then I made the second one on how to actually craft the steel pickaxe and steel hammer. Now we're going to be going to the next evolution. So uh, the main tools that you use to harvest and fix things in this game are your pickaxe and hammer. So that is what controls how far you can progress. And so... Uh, uh, the first generation, the tier 1 ones, are the Iron Hammer and the Simple Pickaxe. Moving up to tier 2, you have the Steel Pickaxe and Steel Hammer. Like I said, I've already showed you how to make those, so if you've been following my videos, you should have these. Today's video is going to be the Shinor Hammer and the First Age Pickaxe. And so starting off with the first age pickaxe, since the pick always kind of comes first, uh, you can see it's a tier 3 pickaxe. It says this pickaxe has runes inscribed using black diamonds, giving it power to mine difficult rock and carefully extract fragile but valuable ore such as silver. Uh, you need three steel ingots, which you know how to make now that we've uh, unlocked steel, so for that you just need iron and coal. Then we need one black diamond, and we need four ubasum wood. And so, oh, as well as being able to make a gem cutter. And so to be able to make a gem cutter, all I believe you have to do is find your first rare gem. So any of the rare gems in Emerald Ruby, Sapphire, Diamonds, anything like that that you find, you should unlock the ability to build a gem cutter. And to build a gem cutter, you need stone, ubasum wood, and steel ingots. So since the common core here is the ubasum wood, and you already know how to extract stone and make steel ingots at this point, if you've been following my guides, I'm going to show you how and where to find ubasum wood. All right, and uh, I will not show you how to walk there per se, since it's, uh, you know, every map is different, but I'll show you how to enter into the region uh, and that will be over here so you can see we are in the western quarter which is in the western halls or I should say we're in the elven quarter which is in the western halls it's kind of your starting area for the game it's this big square room uh, off to one side usually you'll have the back forge area over here and then you'll have a room off to the right this is going to be the way that we go to get down to uh, the lower de uh, deeps which is where you want to go to try to find ubasum wood so uh, that's what we're going to do I'm going to go over to that door we're going to walk down we're going to get into the lower lower deeps and I'm going to show you how and where to find Ubasum wood. So you can see this here is what this entrance will look like. You'll have a stone up front marked with one of Gandalf's runes and then you'll just go through this big archway that's uh, surrounded on both sides by dwarves and this is how you go from the western halls down into the lower deeps which is where we need to go to get all of the resources that we need going forward. So you'll open up into this large room which you can see goes a ways down. You can either just you know jump down and figure out how to build your platforms on the way down if you follow this path to the left. Uh, that will take you down. Like I said, it's just navigating. We're going down. So uh, we're going to cut to that. And basically what you're going to want to do once you've gotten down into the bottom of this area is you're going to be looking for something called the Crystal Descent, which uh, for me, you can see I'm kind of centrally located in uh, what's still considered the Western Halls because we're not down into the lower deeps yet. Uh, you can see over here uh, is where I have the Crystal Descent. So it'll depend on, you know, the specific layout of your map, but you need to find it and I'll show you what it looks like. But while you're finding it, you're going to be able to to get yourself black diamonds and the way you do that is by killing orcs and looting orc encampments so uh i've showed you in previous videos specifically the one about opening orc chests what orc camps look like how to find them and how to then get the uh loot that you want from them that's the best way to find black diamonds before you've got a better pickaxe and before you have access to the lower deeps so that's what you're going to want to do you just uh, are going to want to look for your crystal descent down here and like i said i'll show you what that looks like but while you're doing that loot as many orc camps as possible possible to get your hands on at least one black diamond. And so this is what the crystal descent will look like. You'll find a large room with a big wheel looking thing on it, uh, a hole with some uh, blue stuff scattered around it, and uh, the nice thing about this is there will be a map stone that only requires stone to fix. You won't actually need a black diamond for it, so you should be able to fix this map stone and travel back to the spot whenever you want. The thing is, is you're gonna have to fix this lift. Well, you don't have to. I take that back. Uh, I did manage to get down by building platforms on one playthrough or just hopping down uh, on the platforms and then hopping to the next. Um, that does work. But if you're going to fix it and do it the way that you're supposed to do in the game, you're going to need like 15 black diamonds and uh, I don't remember what else. Elven wood, I think. Oh, elven wood, natural fiber, and 15 black diamonds. That's what it was. So the natural fiber you can get all over the place. A, down in this area, you'll just find it on the floor, but you also get it from picking up spiders webs when you kill spiders and you'll be doing that all the time. So usually natural fiber is not a problem. Uh, elven wood, obviously you already know how to do that you cut down trees in the elven quarter and like i said black diamonds uh 
can be mined later on once we get down there. But for up here, you have to either get them off orcs that you've killed or more likely find them in orc chests in the very, very many orc outposts you'll find in this region. But once you've unlocked this uh, lift and you can go down to the lower depths, that's where we're going to be finding our Ubasum wood. So let's hop down there and find it. All right, once you've done the annoying process of getting all the way to the bottom of the crystal descent, I've got good news and I've got good news. The good news is that you can start finding Ubasum wood all over the place. Uh, for one thing, pretty much all of the mushrooms that you can see, I've cut most of the big ones down that you'll see, but if you get down here, you'll find a lot. Uh, but all of the mushrooms that you can destroy will have a chance of dropping Ubasum wood. Uh, now, like I said, the big ones that pretty much always drop it, I've already cut down, but even these little ones will sometimes drop it. See? There we've got some right there from that little mushroom I just destroyed. So like I said, that's the first bit of good. The second bit of good news about this is there's another map stone down here that only needs, or at least I'm pretty sure, only needed stone to be repaired. So once again, you don't need a black diamond for it. You can repair this map stone, and now you can travel in between uh, the bottom of the crystal descent, which is where we want to actually be for the lower deeps, and back up into your campsite. So once you've gotten down here, you just have to run around cutting down mushrooms. Like I said, these little ones usually don't do it, but I think sometimes they have either that or I've just destroyed a different one and been mistaken at the time. But uh, you want to go around looking for mushrooms and cutting them down for Ubasum wood. And just to show you what a larger, more mature Ubasum mushroom looks like, these are them right there. So uh, this is what they look like. You just go around looking for these mushrooms, destroy as many of them as possible, and you will unlock Ubasum wood. Now, I think that will unlock the gem cutter for you. But either way, like I said, you need the Ubasum wood for your pickaxe. And that should be the last thing that you needed because you should have black diamonds by now. Uh, you should now have plenty of Ubasum wood because you're down here chopping down mushrooms like a fool. And you should have plenty of steel ingots because you could produce those the whole time. I showed you how to do that in a previous video. And those are your ingredients for your first age pickaxe. All right, we're now back at our base and we've got the materials we need. We have our three steel ingots, which again, you should know how to make if you're already trying to make the first age pickaxe. You definitely need to know how to make steel and I've already got a video on that so if you want to watch it just check that video out but we need three of them we need our four ubasum wood and we need our one black diamond so uh, you should know how to get all those things we also need a gem cutter and again to build a gem a gem cutter you need to have it close enough to your forge within your hearth range and uh, you probably I want to say you unlock it the moment you find your first ubasum wood so if you follow this guide to find ubasum wood you should be able to build a gem cutter and for that you need 10 stone 10 ubasum wood and three steel ingots so same type of materials but once you've got that crafted you can go into your forge and you will have the option to craft yourself a first age pickaxe which we're going to go ahead and do so we now have our first age pickaxe so now what we have to do uh, we can swap our st our steel one out for our first age pickaxe we can now mine more valuable things such as silver and that will be contained in adamant and so with the first age pickaxe you're going to be able to go through most things pretty effectively so uh now we just need to upgrade our hammer now for the shinor hammer which is our upgrade to the steel hammer for that we need to do a little bit more so we need to repair the great belagost forge and that one is going to be flooded so that's an interesting path uh, but it's what we need to do so uh, that will bring us back down into the lower depths region so let's just go back down there and we'll find the great belagost forge all right and you're going to be looking for a room that looks like this a big flooded area with a big old lake in it we're going to be trying to get across that lake to get to that pump building word of warning there is a watcher in this water so so uh, I had the crossbow, I believe, by this point, so I was using that to defend myself. A regular bow will also work, but you need some sort of a ranged weapon and plenty of arrows, uh, as well as food, armor, and stuff to fight off dwarf, uh, orcs, because you're going to be fighting the Watcher, it'll go underwater, a bunch of orcs will attack you, you kill the orcs, then you'll be able to shoot it again, you have to do that like five or six times or whatever, and then once you've defeated the Watcher in the water, you'll be able to make your way across by building these piers. But once you've defeated the Watcher in the water, which will happen right about, uh, you'll get to this middle part without anything and you'll make it to about here and it will attack you but once you've defeated it you'll be able to continue building your piers all the way across which is fairly simple and then when you get to the end you'll have to rebuild this pump so instead of having to rebuild a forge this time like we did with the great forge of narvi this time we have to rebuild this pump but it's the same process all the parts can be found right around here you'll have to repair a pipe right there i think and then a pipe in here so this one up there will be missing uh you'll need to repair that gear wheel thingy right there and i believe there wasn't anything in here so it's just the two pipes and 
the gear, I believe, for this one. Uh, and then once you've completed that, you'll pull this lever here and the pump will start working. Uh, that is what you have to do to fix this. And then we're going to be looking for the forge itself, which for me, now this won't be necessarily true for you, but for me, it's over here. So you can see I've got a uh, a travel stone set up, a map stone set up in there for the Belagost Forge Mansion. So this is where I am right now. The great big central room of the lower depths is where you'll find the flooded room with the pump that you need to fix. And then for me, I just head out uh, to the right one up and then straight across. And that's how you find the great forge of Belagost or the great Belagost Forge. Uh, so that's where we're going to be going next. Once you've made your way into this great big room, you'll come in through a door up there or not a door, but a dirt wall and dig through. I have a door there now because I've turned this forge into a mansion. Just a fun little pro tip for you. These forges that you find across the make make excellent spots to set up camp because A, once you've set up your your hearth or multiple hearths depending on the hearth technology of your current day you'll be able to just wall off the openings and put up doors and it makes it really really defensible and especially if your hearth covers the entire area then you won't have any enemies spawning within here and you'll only have those two doorways to worry about defending yourself through so they're really easy to defend they're quite large interior spaces and they're usually very centrally located in the area so if you have map stones set up in all of the great forges a you'll be able to travel back to whichever forge you need whenever you need and b it's just gives you a very convenient location to explore the map from. But anyway, this is the Belagost Forge. You can see it will not look like this when you get into it. I have hearths set up and torches all over the place and storage and all the crafting equipment, but it will have the basic same setup as Narvi's Forge. If you need to fix it, all the parts can be found in here. You'll have one pipe to replace up there, one crank to replace over here, and the gear to replace over there. Very, very simple and straightforward process. Once you get it set up, you'll be able to start using the Great Belagost Forge, but importantly for us here, you're going to be able to start using the Great Belagost Forest. Ah, Furnace, sorry. And we're going to want to go into there, and what you're looking for here is the Shinor Ingots. That's what we're going to need to make this hammer. And it's a very simple process, and now you have a pickaxe that can mine everything. So we need the copper ore, the tin ore, both of which can be mined with the steel pickaxe, so you already could have a whole bunch of those saved up. And we need the silver ore, which is what we needed the first stage pickaxe for, because you need that to dig through the adamant that you'll find silver ore in. And so I've already just smelted some. We're not going to use those. I mean, we can use those. I'm just going to show you where to find uh, in the general area where to find some silver ore. You should already know how and where to find tin and copper ore uh, and they should be, like I would think you'd have enough of them stockpiled already at this point. So uh, let me go find a silver ore vein and show you what it looks like. Alright, and I was able to find a silver ore vein very close to where we just were. So you can see, that's where that forge was. I'm right outside. So, we just went over here and I kept saying adamant. Silver is in Iraz granite. So, Anyway, uh, you have the first stage pickaxe, so just use it to mine yourself as much silver ore as you want. Uh, the granite will also come in handy as that unlocks the ability to build ah, all sorts of granite that. things. But yeah, that's how you get silver ore. So now that I've shown you how to get that, and like I said, you should already have plenty of copper and tin ore at this point. Uh, if not, you know, just go out and find some mines for that too. Those are the three things you need to uh, need to make Shinor ingots now that we have the Belagost Forge. So let's just go craft some ingots. And so we've got our materials. We need those three Shinor ingots, and again, Again, you need copper, tin, and silver to make these ingots, and it has to be here at the Belagost Forge. You have your four Ubasam wood. We've already showed you harvest those by cutting down mushrooms. And we have our black diamond. We needed one of those, and you get those again by killing orcs and finding them in uh, orcish chests, or by mining them in the very lowest parts of the lower deeps. Uh, maybe in a future video I will explore those little regions. But uh, either way, I find myself with a decent stack of them by this point in the game. So those are the materials you need. We're here at the Great Belagost Forge. We're gonna go ahead and and fire it up, and we're going to craft a Shinor hammer. And so that is how we get it. So it says, upgraded tool that rebuilds complex statues and restores damaged buildings faster, needed to rebuild the eastern stairs. So that's typically where you'll find yourself needing the Shinor hammer uh, over the steel hammer, is that you will need it to, A, it is just better for fixing things quicker, but B, you need it to fix the eastern stairs. So it is a gameplay progression thing. So we have now progressed into the tier three as far as pickaxe and hammer. So that is how you get and make both of those. Uh, obviously I covered a lot of things in this video so this isn't a quick guide because you can't just rush through this. You have to take your time to get through it. But I have showed you how and where to find the resources needed to upgrade to tier 3 for tools, that being the pickaxe and the hammer. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. It took a while to make but that's all for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.